guys, Tony here, and in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of one of my subscribers' home theatres. His name is Martin, and he lives in Western Australia, which is literally on the other side of the country to me, and he has an awesome home theatre, which has a DIY star ceiling, which is actually how we met, and we got to talking on my Discord server, and I believe he took some inspiration from my own star ceiling video, but he approached it in a completely different way, which is really cool. So I'll share some of the behind the scenes of Martin and his wife and his family putting the star ceiling together. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'm also going to include some demos of Ready Player One, which shows off the capabilities of this SVS and Crick setup. Although it's hard to capture from an iPhone, it may give you a sense of the sound in Martin's theatre. This one will be my final home theatre tour of 2020, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button for me. It's okay, I'll wait. Anyway, let's get into Martin's home theatre tour. So Martin began the final changes to his home theatre in October of this year, after being stuck in Russia for six months due to COVID, as he is an offshore and gas pipeline worker. Martin has been into this hobby for many years, but as everyone who is into this hobby knows, the itch to upgrade and improve is always there. So Martin began the installation of his new home theatre system, as well as the DIY star ceiling, which really caps off the build. So let's dive into the room itself. Starting with the room dimensions, it is 16 feet long by 14 feet wide and almost 8 feet high, which is a pretty good size to have for a home theatre. The walls have been finished in Taubman's Black Earth to minimise light reflections, which really helps with the immersion factor while watching movies. Even though it's freshly painted, Martin will begin the process of lining the walls with acoustic pinboard. To cater to the two rows of seating, Martin made a riser which is 8 feet wide and 6 foot deep with a height of 1 foot to give clearance to the back row. The seating is from Harvey Norman and has all of the electronic controls with cup holders and LED lights to give the look and feel Martin was going for and also gives enough space for his family and friends to enjoy the experience. Martin is currently working on building some display cabinets which will house his extensive Transformer collection and other movie memorabilia. The projector is a personal favourite of mine which is the Epson 6050UB, a pixel shifting 4K projector which produces an amazing picture with lots of fine tuned controls for image calibration and in my opinion is the best projector you can get for the price point hands down. The projector pairs nicely with a Cinemascope 130 inch fixed frame screen and one of the cool features of this projector is that it has lens shift to adjust from 16x9 mode to Cinemascope as well as manual blanking options to crop light from shining on the screen and creating visible black bars or excessive light above or below or to either side of the screen. So let's move on to the audio. We have a 5.2.2 setup which Martin does plan to upgrade to a 7.3.4 in the near future with some gorgeous SVS Ultra Towers for his left and right. These SVS Ultra Towers are finished in piano black and are an impressive sight in Martin's theatre. They are a 3.5 way with two 8 inch woofers on the sides. You can find out more about these SVS speakers, I have links in the description. Next we have the SVS Ultra Center Speaker, again finished in piano black, perfect for a home theatre setup. These speakers come with a 1 inch tweeter, a single 4 inch mid range driver and dual 6.5 inch woofers. Martin has modified three Harvey Norman TV units to get the perfect height for the centre speaker and also to house his AV gear which I'll cover off in a little bit. Moving to the surrounds, we have them placed at the rear of the theatre, higher up on the wall so as not to be blocked by the theatre seats. These are an interesting speaker with dual tweeter and woofer crossovers which allow for multiple modes such as dipole, bipole and also an SVS duet mode which allows the speaker to act as two speakers in one to go from a 5.1 setup to a 7.1 setup. I've not heard of this before but it sure does sound interesting. For height speakers we have the Australian brand Cricks featuring two Atmospherics AS. 
Anyone who watches my channel knows I'm a huge fan of Cricks and I have a very similar Atmospherics A20 in my ceiling, which is an angled version of this speaker. These are extremely well made, high quality with a full enclosed back box while also being front ported. Martin does plan on adding two more of these speakers to his setup in the near future. For LFE, we have dual PB2000 Pro subwoofers from SVS, and Martin tells me these things pack a punch. This seems to be a consistent message I hear from everyone who owns SVS subwoofers. I know it's impossible for you to hear the sound that Martin can hear in his room, although he did record some on his iPhone for me, so let's play a couple of demos which may give you an indication of the power of this system. Moving along to the AV setup, we have the Anthem MRX740, which is slated to arrive in Martin's Theatre in January, so he has a loaner unit in place till then. The Anthem is a 7.2 channel receiver, which can process up to 11 channels, but can power 7, and has plenty of power for his setup, although he does have plans for an Electra 7 channel amp so that he can buy amp his fronts. Till then, he is using the Yamaha RX A3080, so he and his family don't miss out on movie nights during the festive season. For media playback, we have the Panasonic UB900, which is a 4K UHD player capable of HDR. This allows the playback of Martin's extensive UHD collection. Martin has just added a Telstra TV3 for streaming apps. This is a revised device powered by Roku with voice activation and control. We also have the Logitech Harmony Elite to control all of the devices in the theatre, as well as very soon the lighting. We have Govi RGB strips around the screen, as well as the border of the star ceiling, which I will cover off in a little bit. And we also have some Dita RGB 10 watt bulbs from Bunnings. So now we move on to the crown in the jewel of this home theatre, and that is the star ceiling. Martin actually used some of the techniques and materials from my own star ceiling video, which I will link up above, and was able to make his own system for building and setting it up and fitting it within his room. As he didn't want to have to cut around the lights already in the ceiling, he decided to make rigid panels. The frame is dressed pine and turned sideways to add additional strength. There are aluminum right angle pieces around the perimeter purely to add the LED strips. Screws are all recessed in so that the edges could be rounded off nicely to give the panels a more finished look. The panels were the same ones that I showed in my video from Bunnings, which are an acoustic pin board. The light engine is the Chin Li double connector, similar to mine, and there are a total of 860 light points in three different sizes. I will have links in the description to where you can buy these light engines for yourself. Martin also used the larger ones to do zodiac signs in 1.4 millimeters and some 1 millimeters, and the rest were all in 0.75. To hook it up, there are two pieces of dressed pine screwed into the rafters through the ceiling and then marked out on the panel the positions for the hooks. Instead of the way I did it where I undid all of the fiber optic strands, Martin kept the plastic on them and then pulled it back as much as needed so that he could tape each into a bundle of 50 with electrical tape. And then it's taped to each section and then the holes drilled through the timber structure so as to avoid any dark patches or grid lines. To keep things neat and tidy, each bundle of 50 was fanned out from a single point. To build the star ceiling took around 40 hours, but with the wife's help, he got it done. Even though Martin painted the pine frame black, he has since made an additional felt edging. This changed the look of the sides greatly as it now blends in with the panels and also adds as a deflector to the Govi RGB strips to halo the frame better. LED strips were from Govi RGB and are actually connected to the screen via extensions from Amazon so the perimeter of the screen and the star ceiling are synchronized. I think Martin has done an amazing job of getting his star ceiling and home theater set up. So show him some love down in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button for me. And if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have links in the description to everything mentioned in this video. So if you're interested, check that out as well. Anyway, that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. 
Bye for now.